Hi, I'm Genevieve Stearns. And I'm Amy Lear. And we're middle school students. Did you know that 82% of prison inmates dropped out of high school? And most of them can't read. That figure came from the Coalition for Juvenile Justice. The same group reports that one-third of all juvenile offenders read below fourth grade level. This kind of information worries my classmates and I. Back in sixth grade, our teachers set up a Google Hangout with Matthew Gross, the founder and CEO of Newzella. This website rewrites news articles at different reading levels so kids can understand the text better. Mr. Gross challenged us to make a documentary for middle schoolers to inform them how important it is to read. Great, so before you dive into that, here's what I want you to do as a little bit of background information and tell the world about this. First of all, find out why reading is important. Why is it important for jobs, for college, for enjoyment of life, for making money, all of these things. So find out why reading is important. And the second thing I want you to do is focus on nonfiction because it's pretty easy to get kids to read fiction books, but sometimes it's hard to get kids to read nonfiction and information about the world. He asked us to persuade you us middle schoolers to read more nonfiction. We've been researching trying to understand who reads and who doesn't and why this is. We've learned some surprising facts about middle school readers. Take this chart for example. The number of middle schoolers who chose not to read a book independently during the school day is more than twice the amount of kids ages 9 to 11. It gets worse in high school. The number of high schoolers who didn't read independently in class during the school day is almost triple the amount of kids aged 9 through 11. So why are we choosing not to read independently in school? Is it a lack of time, lack of interest, or something else? One reason we found is reading is hard. This is something we've heard from different people. Dan Cogandrew, a co-founder of Newzella, said in an email that reading can feel like a lot more work than doing something else. Larry Bloomquist, an Elk Grove Unified School District official, said, Some kids opt not to read because it is simply too hard for them. They feel unsuccessful and they struggle so much that it doesn't seem worth it to them. Another reason kids sometimes don't read is that they view reading as an efferent activity and not an aesthetic one. When you read efferently, you are reading to do something with a piece of text. Answer questions, write essays, identify a main idea or detail, summarize information. When you read aesthetically, you read for fun and entertainment. We'll say more about this later. It's unfortunate that some kids don't read because choosing not to read has some serious consequences. For example, a research paper titled Adolescent Literacy, a National Reading Crisis, states that more than one-third of juvenile offenders read below fourth grade level. That doesn't mean if you don't read, you'll end up in jail, but it does connect to something Dan Kogan Drew said to us in an email. He said, when kids don't read, they're left out of the conversation. Choosing not to read means kids have fewer choices and their options start small and get smaller. Incarceration rates for adults seems to support this. According to the Coalition for Juvenile Justice, 82% of adult prison inmates are high school dropouts. Every school day in America, 3,000 kids drop out of school, many of whom are poor readers. Therefore, not reading and not developing literacy skills at a young age can seriously affect your future. We found that building literacy skills now while you're in middle school and high school pays off. A high school dropout can expect to earn about 60 cents for every dollar a high school graduate makes. A person with a college degree can expect to earn more than three times what a high school dropout would make. That means if a college grad makes $3,600 on average per month, a high school dropout will only make $1,200. The more education you get, the more you will make. It's that simple. Virtually any job that makes more than a minimum wage today will require a person to be able to read, write, and speak. Mr. Drew said it might be easier to list out the jobs that a non-literate person can get. get. All the following jobs require a person to be literate. Doctor, lawyer, teacher, law enforcement, military, civil service, computer programmer, designer, carpenter, electrician, plumber, technician. And this is just the beginning of a much longer list. Even if you want to go into pro sports, become the next famous singer or rapper, be a competitive gamer for a living, it still requires a lot of reading. Contracts, lyrics, playbooks, licensing agreements, instructions, 
there are a lot of things these people read on a daily basis. Reading isn't just something you do to make a living. Reading can be something you do for fun. Which brings us to another risk of not reading. You miss out on the enjoyment. We've learned that kids who didn't spend enough quality time with books at a young age may not develop an aesthetic stance towards reading. That means they never learned they could just read for pleasure. We met with CSU Sacramento Professor Porfidio Luiza and Miss Larray Bloomquist from the Elk Grove Unified School District. They kept going back to the fact that reading aesthetically helps kids form pictures in their minds like a DVR playing a movie of what they read. When I was in the classroom full time, I would ask my students, when you read do you picture what you're reading? So is it like a movie going on in your head? And probably about half of them didn't, which means one half of the brain, like if I were to say, um, read the word C-A-T. What is C-A-T? Cat. Okay. So some students would read that and they'd understand, oh, that means cat. And other students would read that, say cat, and picture a cat. If you read it and only see the word, then you're only processing with half of your brain. Kyleen Beers is an educator and literacy expert. She argues reluctant readers can become readers. She states kids should first read for themselves. So if you're a middle school student that doesn't really like reading, it might be because you haven't found things that interest you. Like skating or baseball? Read about it. Even if it's a comic, novel, blog post, web page, magazine, or something else, just read. We've seen there are a lot of benefits to reading, but we've got some bad news and some good news. Bad news first. In every state, in every grade, boys aren't keeping up with girls when it comes to reading. The Center on Education Policy calls this the most pressing gender gap issue facing our schools. It's an old problem. Since the 1960s, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, or the NAEP, has measured the gap in kids ages 9, 13, and 17. And the gap doesn't disappear once kids graduate high school. Writing for GreatSchools.org, Linda Jacobson described how since the 1990s, college graduation rates for women have increased compared to men. Today, 60% of college grads are women and only about 40% of college grads are men. Forty years ago, a gender gap in reading wouldn't have mattered as much because jobs back then didn't require as much reading. But that has changed. Being able to read and write and interact with others is more important today than ever before. Experts suggest different reasons for the gender gap. Robert Weiss, a psychology professor at Denison University, believes that video games and other electronic devices can distract boys from reading. Electronics aren't the only thing competing for boys' attention. Participating in sports, hanging out with friends, and watching TV are all good things when they're balanced with reading. Another thing that might discourage boys from reading is the homework some teachers assign. School actually kills engagement in reading for many boys, says Jeffrey D. Wilhelm, a professor of English education in Boise State University. Boys don't like reading homework because, the t because teachers are forcing them to read books that they don't enjoy. The last reason experts say some boys are falling behind in reading is because their fathers aren't serving as reading role models. The Pew Research Center and the National Endowment for the Arts find that women read more at home than men. If boys don't see their dads reading, they might view reading as something that just girls do. We found that the majority of teachers are women, and some ex experts believe female teachers might be assigning books that are m more appealing to girls than boys. Enough bad news. Now for the good news. We've discovered that too many middle schoolers aren't reading enough. We can change this. Here's how. The first step we think all middle schoolers should take is to figure out what kind of reader they are. Kylan Beer states that there are five types. An avid reader is committed to reading and enjoys it. A dormant reader is one who likes to read but can't always find the time for it. Uncommitted and unmotivated readers don't like reading. And unskilled readers may or may not like reading but they truly don't know how to read. It's important to know the last three groups do not identify themselves as readers and they do not know how to read aesthetically. So what does this all mean? Reluctant readers need to learn how to read aesthetically or for fun. We want to send a message to 
to the reluctant readers. Focus first on finding something you're interested on. Something funny, scary, sad, unusual, happy, anything that appeals to you. Then go out and find text on that topic. If you're not sure where to start, ask an adult to help. There's some neat articles on Newzella. How about reading an article about sea stars turning into goo and warming oceans? Or how Barbie family got her first pair of flats after five decades of wearing high heels? Did you know the f a four-year-old recently found a 94-million-year-old dinosaur bone? Want to read about an 80-year-old grandma who teaches karate? Did you hear the one about the guy who was rescued after 66 days adrift in the Atlantic? How about the blind high school swimmer that went to state finals? These are some interesting articles we've read for fun. And there are so many more interesting things to read about in the world. Now, sometimes committing to an entire book makes it feel like you have to finish it. But here's a little secret. You don't. If you start a book that frustrates you or doesn't keep your interest, you always have the choice to, to read something else. Here's an idea. Why not start small and take advantage of technology? Read shorter passages like online blogs or websites using iPad, Kindle, iPhone, or other electronic devices. You could also read short articles like the ones we read on Dogo News or Newzella. By the way, Newzella is an online news website for kids or, or adults. You can select the type of article you want to read. You can select the lexile or difficulty of the text. Question, are you a slow reader? Is reading not fun because it takes too long to finish it? Here's something we've learned. By practicing reading, you will increase your reading speed. It's kind of like dribbling a basketball. When you first start, you aren't that good, but when you practice, you get better. Also, some of our classmates thought it's important not to compare yourself to other people. We all read at different speeds and levels, and that's okay. Reading isn't a race. There is no finish line. There's always another book to read and enjoy. To be a reader, you have to have confidence in yourself that you can read. So read first for yourself. Read aesthetically. Read what, you, what interests you. But the important thing is just read. To be a student or to be successful in life after school, sometimes you have to read effortlessly. It might be challenging. It might be time consuming. But it's worth it in the long run. You have more job opportunities. You make more money. To be a citizen in our country, you have to make your voice heard to get you what you want. In 1865, slavery in the United States was outlawed. In 1920, women were granted the right to vote. In 1924, American Indians received the, the vote. In 1952, Asian immigrants to the United States were able to become full citizens. In 1967, interracial marriage became legal. And in 2015, the residents of Ferguson, Missouri, elected three African-American city council members to help lead a city divided by racial tensions. All of these changes happened because literate people understood the issues involved and wanted to be part of the solution. You can be one of those people too, but the key to a brighter future requires all of us to be literate.